Good morning, folks. I hope your minds are activated because today's news is not for sleepwalkers. We begin with what looks like and absolutely is a quiet coronagraph indicative of weak solar activity over the last few days. However, at the end of this sequence, we will see what caused us to issue a heliospheric disruption warning at QuakeWatch.net last night. If Dr. Uyen has taught us one thing, it's that we can readily observe and confirm time and time again the fact that non-Earth-directed CMEs seem to trigger seismic and meteorological disruptions at Earth via longitudinal waves propagated through the electric current sheet and the expanse of the interplanetary magnetic fields. I'd love to show you as much as possible on SDO, our go-to satellite, but it is relatively useless starting right after the first filament eruption, which you can see bottom left. Lots of these jolts right after eruptions. You see the filament CME on the left there, but the right side shows one much bigger. Using the GOES SXI, we can see that the one on the right side was behind the western limb on the far side of the sun. Let's go ahead and use the Proba 2 swap. FYI, the minor eruption on the north is not expected to be at all significant, but we can't say the same about the burst from the back side. Using stereo A position behind the sun, we see the eruption go off the bottom left there. That was the right side in our previous looks from the Earth orbiting satellites. This eruption was titanic and we are indeed lucky it will miss Earth. However, it will reach 1 AU from the sun sometime within the next 36 to 48 hours and the next coronal hole will be facing Earth at that time. Combine that with a moderate geocentric conjunction of Venus and Saturn, and we've got a lot of earthquake ingredients in the coming hours. By the way, the next alignment after this will be a significant one. Earth, Mercury, Sun, and a line. I suppose we should still come to space weather news and find two minor surface pops and another CME on the left side from behind the limb, which may have been triggered by our newest sunspot group. The top sunspot on the disk right now has beta polarity, but no delta potential at this time. Despite everything that seems to be going on, the Earth-facing solar quiet has continued to stifle solar flaring. Solar wind remains elevated from the coronal hole stream, but not too intense, and geomagnetic activity is waning. Let's go on to the top news articles. Scientists have found a number of good candidates like Eta Carinae. Why do you care? Because this is what they look like. An awesome stellar explosion in progress. Mainstream scientists believe this was caused by two extremely close stars. You may remember a few months ago when I first shared this animation from NASA that in addition to being generally incredible space phenomena, the two lobed outer cloud form screams electrical influence, especially since there's such a disparity in the binary's close approach versus the furthest point distance. This would make an incredible environment for studying stellar plasma. Could you imagine if we could shrink this down and just let Billy go play with it in the lab? One more look at the double lobed outer cloud structure. Folks, allow a grin to come over you as the latest news on action at a distance should be a huge red flag for entanglement scientists. The mysterious force conducting the non-local effect is actually local, but it's an electric wave that permeates far beyond where the current and corresponding magnetic fields can be found. Just let that one sink in for a moment on a galactic and universal scale, then for the sun and the earth. Hate to do it, but gotta go sad here for a moment. When thousands of MERS washed up in California in the fall, it was the expected seasonal die-off, but there's no such explanation this time when it's three months later, well north in Alaska, and the birds are being reported to be emaciated and in extremely high density on the beaches. This observer wonders if the density portion of that may just be related to differences in current structure between the Prince William Sound and the Pacific coastline. Either way, sad story. Website members, last night's Deeper Look episode is a bit of a one-two punch with some predictions and analysis on space weather and El Nino. We're just a few weeks away from observing the frontier. Myself, Dr. Uyen, August Dunning, Dave Talbot, Adrian D'Amico, Tony Rango, and Walter Harris from the University of Arizona will be probing the frontier of your favorite topics at a level we can all understand and with which we can all engage. We've got your pressure and radar forecast in the top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.